guys i'm steve welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if it's your first time stopping by the channel hit that subscribe button trust me you won't regret it if you're a return to subscriber as always guys welcome back and i do appreciate the support guys we've been covering the story as of yesterday when it you know more details came out about a shooting out there in chicago shout out chicago involving a police officer who tragically lost his life 26 year old enrique martinez pictured here now, the guy that killed him, you know, his name is Darian McMillian. He's 23 years old, and he's not shown yet. He'll be in court tomorrow. But uh, yesterday, I did a couple of videos on this. I showed the one video where you could see the shooting where they blurred it out, but you could hear it. Where the guy had a, it like a uh, automatic weapon, but they're saying it's a Glock switch he had where you just hold the button and the bullets just fly out. It was loud and it was a high caliber weapon. And uh, Officer uh, Martinez tragically lost his life. But um, today they talked a little bit about the details leading up to the shooting of Officer Martinez. And they are mind blowing. It was like something out of a movie. Where do you hear all this stuff that this guy, Darian McMillan, age 23, who's presently locked up, did in his efforts to try to get away and it's a good thing he was caught people like this don't belong in society and they prove it with their actions on a day-to-day -day level take a look at this and we're gonna come back and get deep on it we have to get to those charges filed in that deadly shooting of a chicago police officer tia ewing is first at four live from police headquarters right after a news conference tia well, we are still waiting on the mug shot for 23 year old Darian McMillan. He is charged with six felonies for killing Chicago police officer 26 year old Enrique Martinez. He's also charged with attempted murder of a Chicago police officer after he dragged an officer trying to get away from the scene. Officer Martinez was killed by the violence he worked to stop. We have more guns on our street than I believe that we have people who need to hold them. McMillan was the passenger in a car that was stopped in traffic in the 8,000 block of South Ingleside Monday night when Officer Enrique Martinez and his partner approached the car. McMillan was reaching into a bag. That's when he pulled out a gun that was modified to be an automatic weapon. He allegedly fired at Officer Martinez and the bullets traveled everywhere, even hitting the driver of the vehicle he was in. McMillan allegedly pushed that driver out of the car and attempted to get away. And in the process, that's when he dragged an officer who did sustain some injuries. We're told that officer will be okay. He then took off on foot, breaking into a woman's home, grabbed a knife and cut off the ankle monitor that he was wearing. And less than 10 minutes of the two murders, he was taken into custody. Police Superintendent Larry Snelling says switches being added to handguns are a death sentence for anyone that comes in contact with one. Let's make no mistake about why someone wants to convert a handgun with an extended magazine or a drum to a fully automatic weapon. They want to create as much carnage, human carnage, as they possibly can. It's hard to stand here and talk to you about an individual who was out there with a device and our officers had no chance as they approached this vehicle. Yeah, well, Snelling also described McMillan as being a convicted felon. In fact, that ankle monitor that he was wearing, that was out of Will County for trying to cheat on a drug test. And he was actually apprehended right here in Cook County, traveled back to Will County, and that's when they put that ankle monitor on him. Now, in terms of the third person that was in the suspect vehicle, we are told that that person was released without any charges because, according to police, he had nothing to do with Officer Martinez's death. Now, in terms of when Darian McMillan will be back in court, that will happen tomorrow. Actually, his first court appearance will happen tomorrow at 1130 in the morning over at Layton Criminal Courthouse. Live from police headquarters, Tia Ewing, Fox 32 Chicago. There are new details tonight in the murder of a Chicago police officer. The 23-year-old is now facing charges in connection with the deadly shooting. Tia Ewing has been following this story. She joins us now live with the latest. Tia. 
Well, Don and Scott, we actually just got his mugshot, and it's very interesting. We'll show it to you here shortly, but let's talk about what we've learned. 23-year-old Darren McMillan was already a convicted fel felon, and now he's facing six felony counts, one obviously for attempted murder of uh, the officer that he dragged when he tried to get away from the scene. He's also facing first-degree murder charges for the killing of 26-year-old Chicago police officer Enrique Martinez. And let's show you that mugshot that I was just talking about. We just learned yesterday of McMillan's long criminal history. The 23-year-old has been arrested for unlawful possession of a weapon and has a pending case out of Will County for possessing and manufacturing cannabis. Months ago, he tried cheating on his drug test on October 16th, that's when he was placed on an electronic monitoring and an ankle monitor was put on out of Will County. McMillan was the passenger in the stop car Monday night in the 8,000 block of South Ingleside. When officer Enrique Martinez and his partner approached the car, McMillan was reaching into a bag and that's when the suspect pulled out a gun modified with a switch on it, able to fire off multiple rounds in just seconds. After noticing McMillan, in the front passenger seat, reaching for a bag on the floor of the vehicle, Officer Martinez and his partner gave verbal direction for McMillan to stop reaching. At this point, McMillan produced a fully automatic handgun equipped with a machine gun conversion device and an extended magazine and fired in the direction of Officer Martinez, fatally striking him. The driver of the vehicle was also fatally struck multiple times by McMillan's gunfire. The weapon was recovered inside the vehicle. Martinez was driven to the hospital by his fellow officers, but sadly died. McMillan pushed the driver of the car. He was in out of the driver's seat, and that's when he dragged that officer. That officer discharged one bullet into the ground. He was injured, but we are told he will be okay. As for McMillan, he then took off on foot. He then broke into a woman's house and removed his ankle monitor. He cut it off with a knife. He was quickly caught just a few blocks away, and there was a third suspect inside of that vehicle when all of this happened. That person was in the rear uh, seat of the vehicle. I am told that that person was released without any charges. The Chicago Police Department saying that that person had nothing to do with the officer's death. Now, as for McMillan, he will be inside a courtroom tomorrow morning at 1130 over at Layton Criminal Courthouse. And, of course, we will be there. Live tonight, Tia Ewing, Fox 32, Chicago. Guys, before we get into the uh, details of this uh, story, I'm going to be honest with you. Somebody need to be accountable for letting that guy out off like that. Or s they need to change these laws like we've been talking about. Need to change these laws. I would do a mass overhaul of all the laws about violent crime and just crime, period. I would wage a war on crime nationally in this country. And it sounds crazy, I would. I would put out a bunch of public service announcements letting people know, you know, over a certain amount of time, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You better prepare yourself, get yourself right. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be kind of, I would let people know. Guy doing his job, officer. And one of the reasons why I can't be no cop, you never know when death is coming. And you see stuff you can't unsee. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room. What the fuck is wrong with his mouth? What's in his mouth? Why he look like that? He looked like he got phosphorus in his mouth. You know, y'all ever break a railroad flare or one of those roadside flares apart? They got that yellow powder in it. Like he ate that shit. Jesus Christ. I, I'm done. Just looking at that, I, I already know. I, I don't even want to say no more. What did he do? Yeah, all right. I, I believe you. This dude shot his friend or acquaintance who was the driver to death while shooting the officer at the same time because he got a gun that he can't control because it's shooting all crazy. It was like he unloaded the whole clip. Still had an officer right there, you know, next to him. Pushed the man out the driver's side after blowing him away. Some type of acquaintance to him. He killed the man, killed him. Oh, shit. Push him out the car like on a movie. Because if you look back at the video I did yesterday, when 
we were doing like, you know, like a recap of what happened and all that stuff. You seen the body fall. I thought that was the officer's body. He pushed the body out the car. Remember they said the car backed up and hit another car? Hit another car and then hit an officer trying to get away. He couldn't get over there fast enough, so he took off on foot and ran. Said he ran in somebody's house. Ran up in the lady's house, grabbed the knife, cut the thing off of him, plotting his escape. Said the car was parked illegally. That's why the cops pulled up behind it. It's like a lot of people that are out here doing crimes or have a criminal nature do some of the stupidest stuff to bring the heat right to them and then don't know how to react when they get there. One of the things that cracked me up too is this. People know they're doing wrong or they're in a position to do wrong. Never try to self-reflect and fix themselves. No, they get more and more immersed in the devilishment that they do and the lifestyle that they choose to live. And that's everybody else's fault in society that you can't get yourself right or don't want to get yourself right. Some people like living the life. So this guy got busted and they put him on an ankle monitor for uh, faking a drug test, trying to trying to falsify a drug test. Dishonest to the core. Whose fault is that? You know what I'm saying? Said he was on probation already. Why he ain't back in jail? This officer would still be here. It's so many different things and there's all these different statutes. That's why I say the justice system's a fucking joke. You know what I mean? It's like so many crimes occur, a certain amount of crimes, they know are gonna occur, so they just sweep a lot of that shit under the rug because a lot of people don't feel like doing dealing with it or they know it's wrong, but they get this benefit of the doubt, this unseen benefit of the doubt and this uh, reform of, of prison reform by giving people a slap on the wrist. Here, put this bracelet on. You think he give a damn about that? Who does? People don't even care about them things. How many times have you seen people taking them off? People are not scared of American justice no more. And they damn sure ain't scared of American punishments. And you see it. Everybody running the muck doing their own thing out here. Officers dead. Dead. They showed a procession yesterday coming from the thing. Mad people out there showing support. They flying the uh, police flag for a, a, a lost officer. All this other stuff. You heard the DA? It's more guns than people that can hold them in this city. That right there lets you know you at ground zero and something need to happen. And that's the thing. And it, like I said this before, you know, they're idiots all over. But I met plenty of people from Chicago and everybody I met was cool as hell. I'm like, damn, why y'all even have beef like that out there? Because everybody I met, I ain't never met an a-hole from Chicago. And I met about 40 or 50 people. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. But I just, I don't understand it. You killed your boy. Y'all probably was laughing it up in the car before that. You killed him. And it was a nothing to throw his body out like a piece of trash. While you, the car is driving back. And then you're trying to run. And then you just up and leave. The mess you made. That was your friend or whatever. Just left him there. Then left your boy in the back. Now the guy that was in the back seat, right? They let him go because he didn't have nothing to do with the situation. Said he was reaching for a bag. Hey, don't do that. Stop. Not listening. Hard head, make a soft ass. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Like I said before, the fallen officer, uh, Enrique uh, Martinez, may he rest in peace. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. 23 years old. And this is what he chooses to do with his life. Wasted potential. And it's sad. See you in the next video. Take care.